New Tesla featuring full gaming functionality, recreate the full cyberpunk dystopian experience of being a divorced father telling your emotionally closed off child their next visit will be really cool, because now they can quietly play video games in the parking lot while you drive between jobs in a desperate effort to pay off your Tesla. Tesla. Experience the real time immersion of your bored child telling you they just want the car to drive them home, ruining your lunch plans at the Cheesecake Factory guaranteeing a disappointed call from their mother about the fact you left them alone at home all day. But you love the Cheesecake Factory, you will say, and none of it will matter, because you never had the chance to build a real emotional bond with your child. You are paying off your Tesla, now with full gaming functionality. I'm gonna pay the eight dollars, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of things I could probably link, and I guess I will. If you just want to have a list of Elon Musk's offenses. If you just want a kind of listing of Elon Musk's fuck-ups, um, of all the stupid things that Elon Musk has said and done, the lies and the hypocrisy and everything else, um, that's out there. I think that's being pretty well documented currently. Elon didn't found Tesla. He used the money he got from co-founding PayPal, you know, the payment service that sucks, to buy a stake in Tesla. Then he kicked out the original co-founder, Martin Eberhard, and stole Martin's title, not to mention his car. Well, at best, I imagine a real life loop system would effectively serve as an urban highway, which may be very fast in certain spots, but very slow in others, especially near entrances and exits. You know, like a regular highway. It'll be more expensive to maintain and build, though, and presumably will have user fees Note attached. Also, the Tesla stock, which most of Elon Musk's personal fortune is tied up in, had dropped more than 40%. Some of that was due to just a general dip in the market, but a lot of it was because he was acting like such a dipshit. There's a whole webpage just dedicated to the amount of lies that Elon Musk has said that haven't received any kind of... But seeing the kind of development of things over the last few weeks and over the last few months, there's this thing that keeps kind of pecking away at me, which is kind of the assumption that a lot of the people that support Elon Musk, despite all of this, these things, um, are doing so because they are misinformed. And obviously that is going to be a reality for a lot of people. Elon Musk purchased a social media platform um, so that he could misinform people. But I think there's this other grouping of people that aren't so much misinformed as they are believers in Elon Musk. They believe in Elon Musk and what he represents to such an extent that anytime you present a like counterfact, anytime you present any example of like a shitty thing he said, something that's a contradiction or a hypocrisy, um, something obviously bad, well that's out of context, well that's misrepresenting him. You just don't like him because you're jealous, because you're poor. All these people are booing and I'm just, I'm just pointing out the obvious. Have because you have something to gain and this is just all some malicious and thing. any facts you can gather, anything that you can point to, any quotes, are biased in some way and can be discarded because it isn't really about the information, it's about who you believe in. So this video isn't so much going to be a listing of Elon Musk's wrongs. Again, I'm going to link to some stuff you can go through if that's all you really care about. But I'm more so going to be talking to the believers of Elon Musk. To me, that's more interesting because it says to me that you think that Elon Musk represents something good. And I disagree. Hello, I'm Elon Musk. Die! What the Dad, no! Elon Musk is possibly the greatest living inventor. This is a big man. Sometimes we all want to be big men. I think in large part the discussion just reminds me a lot of when people were talking about Trump and people felt like if they could just expose Trump enough that that would actually lead to a significant loss of support. And I think over time it did enough. But I think I can speak for a lot of people when I say like it was a pretty scary time because it seemed like no matter what facts you could present, no matter how many specific things that were actually said you could put out there, people would discard it because they had this belief in 
like this deeper idea of what Trump represented, like as a as a response to the system. This deeper idea that Trump was kind of going against the establishment, and that therefore um, anything you could really offer would be possibly tinged with the establishment. And is that what Elon Musk is currently doing? Uh, yes, obviously, definitely 1000%. <laughs> Every opponent of Elon Musk is pinned as some kind of establishment shill, despite the fact that Elon Musk is the biggest establishment shill. He is the richest man in the f***ing planet. It's the thing that kind of drives me crazy, because there is this kind of underlying crypto um, fake counterculture movement uh, that, that he's been constantly pandering to. And, and also, in the most vapid fucking ways, he's sharing your memes, and that's like signaling some meaningful connection that he has to, you know, your grassroots movement you're trying to do. This is me, Christopher, a crypto degen with a crush for crypto kitties. <laughs> Right now he's doing like the follow the white rabbit matrix shit to pander to conspiracists. Because Vapid Appeals really is the bread and butter of Elon Musk right now. It's the reason that right now he's going so hard on the Twitter files. Which has led to the, to the shocking revelation that Twitter had this board of people that were discussing how they would enforce their policies. That sounds, that's like some shady shit. They had like people deciding how to enforce their policy, which it turns out mostly amounted to giving preferential treatment to conservative accounts, uh, out of the understanding that it'd be far more controversial to punish them for blatant policy violations. If a leftist, you know, uh, tweets out support for the Palestinian people or calls someone a turf, yeah, they can get banned and like, who gives a fuck? But you know, a conservative account that's pretty much dedicated to targeting LGBT education Boston Hospital denies performing gender-affirming surgery on any patient younger than 18. That still has not stopped the dangerous threats and disinformation. It's been very hard for me over the years um, to care for LGBTQ youth and then to have people, you know, throw terms around like pedophile or, or child abuser. Um, and now I see this happening to my colleagues and it's really heartbreaking uh, to watch happen. That That's, yeah, no, that's way over the line. Although there's been so many times that, right, I'm getting on a plane to England and I'm never going to see you again. Really? <laughs> no. <laughs> um. I think this is the kind of deeper existential terror of Musk to me. Because I think a lot of Elon Musk's fans will see these things and they will acknowledge them as maybe things that have happened. But they'll cover for it, they'll make excuses for it, because they think of Elon Musk as kind of an escape valve from the current status quo. And again, I, I could go on this whole tangent on how Elon Musk doesn't represent a break from the status quo. He is the epitome of the status quo. He is someone who knows how to exploit the system that currently exists and use it to build and maintain his own power. When the richest man on the world is telling you that the problem is too much radicalization, that he wants to cater to the center, meaning the people that don't want to change things, you should understand that this man is not anti-establishment. What Elon Musk is actually concerned about is building his own social media profile. We have to get rid of the bots and trolls and the scams and everything, because that's obviously uh, diminishing the user experience. Definitely on the warpath. And he has such a level of arrogance, such a level of ego, that he genuinely believes purchasing this company is gonna help him in that. Or at least he did at a certain point, and then he realized what a terrible decision that was, uh, and then he was legally bound to it, so... Whoopsie! Uh-oh, uh-oh! What Elon Musk represents is a man who desires status. He doesn't care about accountability, he doesn't care about misinformation. He has spread misinformation on his account and then like gleefully said, oh isn't it great how community tools can like deal with that problem? Which clearly means that all of his policies are only going to be enforced on the people that he disagrees with. He'll like retweet and reply to far-right accounts while never explicitly connecting himself to them. Andy Nyo, Ian Mao Chong, a disgraced game journalist who flashbangs someone's dog. Man. 
imagine my shock. And it would coincidentally be after he was booed by a massive crowd of people that were most likely to be his supporters, that Elon Musk realized that the problem wasn't him. Uh, the problem is uh, the woke mind virus. Like wokeness basically wants to make comedy illegal, <laughs> which is not cool. You might want to sit down. What I have to say right now might be a little cringe. Now, what is the woke mind virus? Um, the concept of progress. The concept of society deciding that things should change in a certain direction uh, and then moving in that direction. The, the idea that perhaps um, multi-billionaires are greedy people often. That when we're in a world of massive financial hardship, when people all over are struggling massively, mm. that there's still people that just have tens of billions of dollars to just throw around. That that's wrong in some way. That that maybe represents a flaw in our current economic system. That wealth can be amassed to such an obscene degree. That what essentially amounts to old money wealth that's good at exploiting currently popular businesses. The best frauds um, will succeed by nature of the current system. And, and I think people see that and people maybe want society to move more in the direction where the majority of people aren't being constantly exploited, aren't seeing significant financial difficulties, while another group of individuals have hundreds of millions of dollars to just play around with. The woke mind virus is trans people uh, and more broadly LGBT people who represent social change. The idea that there's this group of people that you have this kind of learned revulsion towards that is now going to be accepted in society and that's clearly the direction we're moving in and you want to like stop it you want to put a halt to it because like it's this overwhelming like it, it's this this tide that's coming speaking as a representative of the woke mind virus we really are inevitable and, th and that can be scary and I, and I think really that's when an Elon Musk comes along or a Trump or to some extent a Kanye. And I think you can draw an obvious link between the level of desperation that I think a lot of people feel and the fact that they're willing to overlook the fact that these people that are claiming to like be this hard shift, to be these people that are gonna fix this like big wave of change that's coming along um, are the establishment. It's overlooked because I think people have a lot of personal struggles uh, and they feel powerless. And the easiest thing to point to is what's constantly being talked about, which, you know, from the right is uh, groomers, uh, trans groomers. The people are gonna, the, you're gonna go to school and your kid's gonna be trans. First your kid gets trans, and then pretty much the, the, the concept of a family, yeah. masculinity, femininity. Dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. These powerful people come along and they say, I can fix it, I can stop what's happening. And what I think really more than anything, I really want people that buy into this to think about. Let's be clear. Society is collapsing. Uh, every fast food restaurant sucks now. Burger King takes like 30 minutes to give you your order now. Gas prices are high. Things are getting tough. They are gonna get tougher. Uh, and people who think otherwise are extremely sheltered and misinformed. I think it is fundamentally out of this desperation that people jump to these kinds of figures. There's a concept of great man theory that thinks of history as the decisions of specific great men being put into action and changing society and all of these great movements of society that are the result of these exceptional individuals that sort of rose up from the pack and really change things. Creating this narrative that doesn't reflect the reality of society as being composed of constantly developing interests. For every great man, there's a community that led to the creation of that great man. There, there are these, these greater social swings, um, which we might call woke mind viruses. I think there are a lot of powerful people who try to apply this great man theory kind of perspective onto current day politics. In the sense of thinking that someone like Elon Musk could 
put an end to the woke mind virus. But what does it actually mean to agree with this way of thinking? To cede power to people like Elon Musk? To, to give in to the idea of these single figures that make these big decisions to fix society that you feel is going in the wrong direction? The end result is autocracy. It's dictatorship. It's an authority figure who is held to none of the accountability that he holds the public to. Elon Musk wants a world where he can spread whatever fake shit he wants. Where he can accuse his critics of just being pedophiles. Uh... So today, after banning uh, the journalists, Musk ran a kind of dishonest poll, uh, essentially asking whether he should unsuspend the accounts. Um, and, it, and it turns out that, yeah, people people did think he should unsuspend the accounts. So now he's just, um, so now he's just made a new poll and it seems like maybe, maybe he's not gonna get the result he wanted this time either. I guess this is the new way that democracy works. The woke mind virus to him is just a world where he doesn't get total control of the narrative. And, and I really do think the willingness to cede that to him, to give him that power, when you don't even know what he fucking believes. Cause all he does is like signal vaguely in the direction of whatever group he thinks may support him. I think at this point he's going to be pandering to like the anti-immigration crowd despite the fact that he himself was definitely an illegal immigrant who is currently benefiting off of immigrants that are reliant on work visas. And I, and I know that saying he was an illegal immigrant almost makes him sound cool but you know think about the hypocrisy of it you know. Th it's the hypocrisy. You really don't think that if Elon Musk thought progressives were on his side, he wouldn't be constantly pandering to them? He's pandering to conservatives because they're the only people that don't resent billionaires. And to fall for that pandering, just because you think that he's gonna kind of like take control of civilization and sort of put it in this right direction. Th that you really want power in the hands of these single individuals that hold themselves to no standard, no principles. To someone like Elon Musk, democracy is only rhetoric. There is no underlying belief in any of these things. And I think that's kind of the deeper existential terror I feel from people like Elon Musk. Is the lighting okay? Uh huh. In Frank Herbert's Dune, there is. Well, there's a lot of different concepts, but there's the concept of the golden path, the direction that civilization is going to be going in. And that it's the job of these chosen few to lead that path. Now, in the third entry, uh, Children of Doom, the main character, Paul, um, is no longer present, uh, and the perspective switches mainly to his two kids. So there's Leto the second. Over the course of this third book, Leto goes through this whole process of kind of realizing the golden path, and he sort of undergoes this physical transformation too. You know, to be able to take control of this uh, predictive force, to see the direction society is going to go in, and ultimately uh, transforms himself into um, a giant armored worm king. Now, what a lot of people don't know is that Elon Musk has also been developing special abilities that he needs to follow the Golden Path. And the most notable power being that Elon Musk um, sucks really hard. He actually has the uncanny ability to physically suck oxygen out of a room. And you can actually see this in a few different clips, you know. If we look at the SNL footage, what you'll see is a bunch of, you know, fairly wealthy cast members of SNL. This is like a low-key oxygen-sucking moment for Musk. He's slowly sucking the oxygen out of the room. You can you can see the discomfort, but, but they can kind of deal with it because, you know, they're SNL cast members. They've probably got some kind of oxygen stockpile somewhere. They can go to an oxygen bar. When we see in the recent Dave Chappelle in Incident is, is that that is like an emergency situation. Elon Musk is in that arena. He is sucking oxygen out of the room. A lot of the people in that arena probably can't afford to have the oxygen sucked out of there. So they're like boo they're saying, get this guy out of here. Get him out of the arena before he sucks all the oxygen out and all they all die. Thanks for having me on the stage. 
Elon Musk has been benefiting from his ability to suck really hard for a really long time. Uh, sucking the oxygen from other powerful people, powerful groups or organizations that benefit him at any given time. As a result of his oxygen stockpile, Elon Musk currently has the ability to blow really hard. He likes to blow hard in the direction of now any group or organization that supports him that, that gives him some kind of legitimacy you know anything that can build his support base he'll he'll blow he'll blow in their direction what's important to understand is that all of this is cover elon musk much like leto wishes to lead the golden path except in in elon's case he wishes to do so by sucking the hardest that anyone has ever sucked before Elon Musk wants to suck so hard that he's the only one left who can breathe. I've spoken before on my channel about how I'm very skeptical of a lot of people that see themselves as like rationalists. People that see themselves as basically being guided by the facts and logic, letting the data kind of guide their perspective on any given topic. I do believe that underneath everything there is a certain level of belief and that a lot of people start from their principles and, and then will use data and facts that seem to sort of support the conclusions that benefit them based on what they believe in. And, and that's why for my channel I've been trying to focus more on the belief side of things. So like, why do you actually believe in this idea rather than um, just trying to sort of clear up misinformation or like bad facts because, because I do really feel like for the average person the facts are gonna only be part of the bigger picture. With all this said, even if I really believed that this one political figure could take control and clean things up in the direction that I want to see society go in, I have the understanding that creating such a position could easily be exploited to an absurd degree. Disaster capitalism suggests the deliberate stoking and exploitation of these social economic crises as a way for soulless profiteers to disguise and justify questionable practices and blatant power grabs. They're not countable, they have <laughs> an entire career background of exploitation, and they can't even be held to their like policy prescriptions because they don't even have any. They just have vague appeals to something that seems generally in the direction of what you would support. The second a Musk decides to put in place the kinds of policies that you don't agree with, you can't do shit about it because you've already ceded total control to this fucking, to this power hungry prick who in all likelihood is just doing all of this as a ploy to get back at their transgender daughter. No, 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 I'm sure it's a total coincidence that the woke mind virus is taking over at the exact time that Elon Musk is getting disowned by his child. Elon Musk, if you're watching this, Please watch everything everywhere all at once. But actually watch it, you know? Not like watch it like the way you watch Parasite. If we could all just watch everything everywhere all at once, but really pay attention to it, I mean, the directions we could go in as a society. Elon Musk is not looking out for your best interests. He isn't looking out for anyone's best interests, aside from himself. Elon Musk desires power, and he's willing to pander to literally anyone that will help him get it. And if you want to buy into it, if you want to buy that he has your best interests at heart, you better have some really strong faith because the second you give it to him, he doesn't give a fuck about relinquishing a single iota of it. I genuinely think that things are desperate right now, that things are not great right now and that drastic action has to be taken in a kind of revolutionary direction. With all that said, I'm not just gonna throw all of my weight behind these random ideologues that just wanna give these vapid appeals in the general direction of wokeness. I'm not suddenly gonna get behind the Disney CEO just because, like, a Marvel movie had a trans character or something. Just because we have Strange World now doesn't mean I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, you know, uh, I think that actually uh, you should really just, like, drain the swamp drain out that swamp and, and you should be in charge. You can't be naive enough to not know that the already powerful are gonna be aware of how you're feeling, what you're thinking about. Is there a golden path? Is there an inevitable direction that society is going in? 
I don't really know. Um, I don't think so. But if there is kind of one, then we also need to understand that there's going to be people already holding significant amounts of power that want to take control of it and will tell you exactly what you want to hear so that they can get what they want. Elon Musk wants to be the worm king. Don't let him. Folks, if you like the videos, make sure to use the links down below to support the channel. Special thanks to the patrons scrolling by right now. I am in a park in South Haven? South Haven, Mississippi. And then I think my Christmas video is gonna be about Marvel movies. So that will be fun, I think. Community's loving it, like on Twitter.